Welcome, welcome to the third part of this new in-depth study, uh, the discipline of the Most High. And this is also the last part because it's a three-part series in this case. And we start with uh, chapter six or part six. And uh, the title is The Peaceable Fruit of Righteousness Yielded Through Discipline. And uh, please start with the first part and then the second part because you can't just uh, watch this third part on its own without having the basic understanding of part one and two first. This is very important. All right. The peaceable fruit of righteousness yielded through discipline. This is such an interesting and learning in-depth study. And I truly, truly say to you, go listen to this one many times. But actually, all these in-depth study series that have been rolled out so far are of great importance to go through many times. So I would suggest that you download them and convert them into MP3 so you can listen to them many times because it's not about me sitting here. I'm just working as a vessel for the Most High. Uh, <clears throat> the, work, the Most High is working through me. <clears throat> Well, not just a vessel, but um, anyways, it is not me speaking these words. Uh, the extra information comes from the Holy Spirit. So, know this. It's not about me. That's why I never mention my name. That is why you never see anywhere on uh, the videos my, my name, except on the live videos, because... Uh, you need to add your name, otherwise you can't use the surface. <clears throat> Verse 11 says, and we are, by the way, this um, study is based on chapter 12 of the book of Hebrews from verse 6 to verse 13. So we are now... Uh, doing verse 11. Verse 11 says, Now, no discipline at the present time seems to be a matter of joy, but of grief. But afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been exercised by it. Here, the disciple draws special attention to the words at the present time time and also afterward it is a fact that one does not feel happy at the time of discipline but grievous do not think that suffering is wrong when you experience the most highest discipline discipline is surely a suffering the book of scriptures does not say that the stake is a joy well, um, Yeshua didn't laugh when he was hanging at the stake, so it is serious. <clears throat> it, say, it says rather that the stake is affliction. The stake brings us suffering. The master despised the shame for the joy set before him. This is a fact. The book of scriptures known as the Besora does not say that the stake is a joy. The stake is not a joy. It is always a suffering. It is not wrong to grieve and feel afflicted when we are disciplined. But we must learn obedience. Only through obedience can we partake of the Most High's Holiness. Verse 
Discipline indeed is not a matter of joy at the present time. Instead, it is grief to us. This is not surprising. It is in fact quite normal for us to feel this way. Our master did not consider the trials a matter of joy when he passed through them. No, he didn't. Of course, we can make it a matter of joy. Peter said that we can exult in various trials. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6 On the one hand, they are a suffering. On the other hand, we can reckon them to be a joy. How we feel is one thing, and how we reckon is another thing. We can feel grieved, but at the same time, we can reckon it to be a joy. So, a, uh, step A of this chapter 6, yielding the peaceable fruit. A child of the Most High should fix his eyes not on the present, but on the future. We need to have our fi eyes fixed on entering his kingdom and do everything that is needed to make sure that we can enter into his kingdom. We need to be focused on that and not what is being rolled out in the outer world because that is a world based there and uh, created only to distract us and derail us from the Most High, away from the Most High. The whole out, outer world that we call world is uh, set up as one gigantic distraction to distract us constantly away and derail us constantly away from the Most High. <clears throat> so pay attention to this sentence. Now, no discipline at the present time seems to be a matter of joy, but of grief. But afterward, afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been exercised by it. Do not look at the suffering you are going through now. Instead, look at the resulting peaceable fruit of righteousness. See that all the suffering that you go through from poverty or what else it is, that it is all part of eventually growing more and more into righteousness. Growing into His holiness, the holiness and righteousness of the Most High, our Universal Father of this universe. Part B, Moab, being at ease from his youth and settling on his lease. Jeremiah or uh, Yashiyahu, chapter 48, verse 11 says, Moab has been at ease from his youth and he is settled on his lease. L-E-E-S. And has not been emptied from vessel to vessel, nor has he gone into exile. Therefore, his taste remains in him, and his scent is not changed. Are you clear what this is saying? This is the problem with many who have not passed through trials. They stay stuck in the um, Adam behavior, as I call it. The passage describes those who have never suffered any chastisement or sufferings before the Master. The Moabites had been at ease from their youth. They experienced no suffering or pain. What did 
such is produce nothing they became like wine settled on its lees l uh, e e s if a person brews liquor from grapes or other kinds of fruit the wine surfaces to the top while the lees settle to the bottom the wine floats while the lees sink in order to clear the wine it has to be poured from vessel to vessel if the lees remain at the bottom sooner or later they will spoil the taste of the liquor in making wine a man must first allow the grapes to ferment to ferment i mean after the grapes ferment he transfers the wine from one vessel to another if he is not careful he will pour the lees out as well this is why he has to pour carefully but one pouring is not enough some lees are bound to escape into the other vessel this is why he has to do this again a second time many still not clear the lees and he has to pour the wine into a third vessel he has to keep pouring until no lees are left in the wine the most high said that moab had been at ease from his youth and had settled on his lease he had not been emptied from vessel to vessel and his lease always followed him one must be um, <clears throat> emptied from vessel to vessel if he wants to do away with the lees he has to be poured out again and again and again until one day the lees at the bottom are gone moab was full of lees although he was clear at the top he was not emptied at the bottom those who have never gone through trials and chastisement have never been emptied from vessel to vessel often it seems as if the most high is digging a person from its roots and from his or her roots and uh, a brother in this case a brother may experience the most high's uprooting through his consecration everything that he owes may be completely uprooted a brother may experience this uh, experience the most highs uprooting through his sufferings and trials he may be stripped of everything he has this is to be emptied from vessel to vessel the most high's hand will crush us thoroughly he does this in order to clear away our lees to be at ease is not a good thing brothers and sisters the most high wants to purify us this is why he disciplines and scorches us never consider ease and comfort to be something good moab's ease caused him to remain moab forever he didn't change so part c of chapter six taste remaining scent not changing here are some sobering words his taste remains in him and his scent is not changed because moab was not emptied from fat to fat from pot to pot and from vessel to vessel and because he was never disciplined and dealt with by the most high his taste remained in him and his scent never changed well this is the condition the majority of people are in today brothers 
and sisters, this is why the Most High has to work on you. He wants to take away your taste and change your scent. The Most High does not want your own taste and scent. Because that taste and scent is based on your natural humanness and your solical life. I once said that many people are raw because they are still in their original state. They have never changed. You had a certain kind of taste before you believed in the master. Mashiach, today you have been a believer for 10 years, yet your taste is still the same. Your scent remains the same as it was before you believed in the master. The word scent in Hebrews, in Hebrew, I mean, means smell, which is the flavor of something in its original state. You had a certain smell before you were saved. Today you have the same smell. There is no change in you at all. In other words, you have not experienced any of the Most High's constitution and carving. The Most High's discipline is indeed precious. He wants to uproot us and to empty us from vessel to vessel. The Most High disciplines us and deals with us in many ways so that we may lose our original smell and yield the peaceable fruit. The peaceable fruit of righteousness can be translated as the peaceable fruit, which is the fruit of righteousness. Part D of chapter 6, the peaceable fruit being the fruit of righteousness. Please remember that the fruit is peaceable. A man must be at peace with the Most High in order to obtain this fruit. The worst thing one can do is to murmur, to lose his peace, and to rebel during times of discipline. One can be grieved by the discipline, but he should not murmur or rebel. The problem with many people is that they have no peace. This is why we need the peaceable fruit when we are under discipline. If you want the peaceable fruit, you must first learn to accept the discipline. You must learn not to fight with the Most High or argue with Him. The peaceable fruit is the fruit of righteousness. Once you have the fruit of peace, you have the fruit of righteousness. This is why the disciples said, The peaceable fruit, which is the fruit of righteousness. Peace is righteousness. If the inward fruit is peace, the outward expression is righteousness. If you have the fruit of peace within, you will spontaneously partake of the Most High's holiness. I hope that none of us would be like Moab, who was at ease from his youth and who had settled on his lees. He had not been emptied from vessel to vessel and had never gone into captivity. Therefore his taste remained in him and his scent was not changed. Some have been believers for 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 years and have remained the same throughout this time. They have not accepted any of the Most High's dealings and have not subjected themselves to them. Thus their taste remains the same 
if our scent remains the same for 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 years, it means that we have never yielded any peaceable fruit before the Most High and have never been constituted with a holy character. Our hope is that the Most High would constitute us with something, something called a holy character. Part 7, the last part of this in-depth study series, is all about conclusion. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 12 and 13 says, Therefore set straight the hands which hang down and the paralyzed knees and make straight paths for your feet that what is lame may not be put out of joint but rather may be healed sometimes it seems that discipline makes the hands hang down and the knees paralyzed but the apostle or disciple told us not to be disheartened the hands may hang down and the knees may be paralyzed but there is the fruit of peace and the fruit of righteousness uh, part a of this chapter 7 the last part setting straight the hands and the knees do not think that after a person suffers much hardship and discipline there is nothing more to be done after we are disciplined and scorched we need to set straight the hands which hang down and the paralyzed knees discipline and scorching will yield the fruit of peace this fruit of peace is the fruit of righteousness. If a person is at peace with the Most High, he will have righteousness. As soon as we calm ourselves down and submit to the Most High, everything becomes right and proper. As soon as we humble ourselves, we become constituted with a holy character. The fruit of peace is the fruit of righteousness. Do not set your eyes on righteousness. Just consider whether or not you are at peace and whether or not you are obedient and pliable. If you are pliable and obedient and if you are at peace you will surely be constituted with holiness please bear in mind that even though you may have endured many trials and experienced many hardships in the past there is still the need for you to set straight your hands which hang down and your paralyzed knees The last piece of this last chapter is making straight the paths. At the same time, you need to make straight paths for your feet. Today we can say that we have somewhat passed through this way. We are presenting this way clearly before you. That what is lame may not be put out of joint, but rather may be healed. Those who are falling behind do not need to be put out of joint any longer. They can be healed and join the others who have passed the same straight course. If a person goes through trials and humbles himself under the Most High's mighty hand, he will find his character constituted with holiness. <clears throat> He will also lead many to this straight course. They will no longer be put out of joint, 
but will be healed. If a brother is before us and he fears of his deviation may dis discourage others from finding the right course. This is why we must be obedient ourselves. We must bear the fruit of peace ourselves. This will not only ensure that we are on the right course, but also will open up the right course for others to follow. All the lame ones can take this way. They can all be healed. I recall the lame man in Acts 3, when his feet were made strong and he began to walk. He stood up, walked, leaped, and praised the Most High. A lame, a lame man was healed, but there are many lame ones in this world today. They can all be healed by the straight course we take. We must open a way for all the brothers and sisters to follow. And with this, I have come to the end of this in-depth study series, a free part in-depth study series. Thank you so much for listening to it. Please re-listen to this in-depth series. It contains a lot of information, wisdom, lessons, and teachings, all from the hand of the Most High. And uh, <clears throat> also, I highly recommend you to go to all the other in-depth study series too. They are truly valuable studies um, with a lot of messages, teachings, and lessons and words of wisdoms, wisdom in it. And I suggest that you download the videos, convert them into MP3 so that you can re-listen as long as this is needed. All right. Thank you so much. Again, I wish you all a Baruch day. Do not forget to praise the Most High in all the things you do. And thank you for doing a little donation. No, if you do so, you are giving something back to the Most High. And uh, he, in return, will uh, Baruch you tremendously. All right. Baruch Abba Hashem, Yahuwah, and uh, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. And I see you next time with another interesting in-depth study series. All right. See you.